Hi guys, this is a tutorial on how to stitch your 360 footage from the Samsung 360 camera by not using Action Director but using Autopano. So create a new folder where you can put your files. What you need to do is duplicate the one file. So we'll take one file, we'll copy it into that folder and just paste it in. We'll then grab the same file again and rename it to A or B so that's a different file name from the other one. So you're going to essentially have two of the same clip in this folder. Drag both of them into Autopano and it should read them like this. Look at that rather lovely face of mine to start off with. So this is on the back of a bike. Um, it was actually a taxi. So what you're gonna do, just go on lens models, you're gonna stitch 7.8 mil fisheye, and it will do an absolutely rubbish job at stitching. It will not stitch it whatsoever, but you just need to get it to stitch something so that we can go into the edit tab, which will then link to Autopano Giga. That's absolutely rubbish, not useful, not gonna work. That hasn't blended anything whatsoever. It's just put the two together and it doesn't know where the uh, control points need to be. When we click on the edit tab, it's gonna say load auto pano giga. So we're gonna load giga. And if we look here, we'll open up the template that it's created. And the first thing we're gonna do is look at image properties down there in the left hand side. Image properties, click on that. and it'll come up with these, the two lenses, or the two clips we put in, which we want to be each different lens. So you can see the circle in on one clip is around the whole thing, so that's what's getting confused. So what you need to do is drag that circle around so it's only fitting over one lens. So we'll just do the left-hand side lens first. And then at the bottom of this window, you can uh, use the forward arrow type, yeah, that one there, to. Uh, go across to the next image and do the same again set the the frame size for the other lens god my face looks absolutely terrible in that picture there should be like a collection for 360 photos or gopro photos gopro face or 360 face so yeah once we've done that we can see that we've got both the different lenses selected if we go okay it's still obviously not going to blend because we haven't set any control points so that's what we're going to do next so we go in the control points tab up there in the top bar. Highlight both the clips because it needs to reference both clips to know where to stitch. So if we look here, it's showing it doesn't really know where to stitch. It's trying to stitch everywhere and it's confusing the software. So let's delete all of them and let's add in our own control points. We'll select an area. So we're going to select that one and then we're going to select the opposite lens and just to see what it may do from highlighting both these two lenses separately. So we do a quick optimization and we can see it's pretty bad to be honest. There's only a few green markers on there and you can see on this what it's done is a pretty terrible job. So we're going to delete them and we're only we're going to reduce the area that it's going to search so really just towards the edges so we'll do one on the left side lens and then we'll do one on the right side lens then we'll do a quick optimization again we've got some more green markers and then we'll do the other side so that it tries to find the other side of the lens on each camera another quick optimization and it's found lots of green markers and that's what we want to see, that's good news. So if we go on the control points tab just next to this, we can see what the RMS value, which is basically the quality of the stitch. Now, I tend to just delete anything from, well, we look what we're doing here, anything down to four and above really, so that it will help improve the quality of the stitch. So we're gonna delete all those values from the bad stitch. So we've just got anything up to four. So that's what it's stitched at the moment, making me look even worse. 
So once we're on the control points tab, we need to go into some of the settings, um, which will help us try and make the, the software understand what camera we are using or how to focus. So we've got automatic, we've got optimized on these various focal distortion offset. So pretty much, if you just don't optimize any of it, this is what the result is. It doesn't do anything, no useful stitching. So what we're gonna change first is the distortion of the lens. So we'll optimize first order, and then we're gonna set the focal and optimize the focal point. And it has actually done a pretty good blend of the two cameras now. Following from that, let's, let's just correct the horizon. So that we've got a uh, level horizon and then we'll reframe it. So where we first want the clip to start, which is obviously gonna be above the, the motorcyclist's head. I'm on the back, we obviously want to see where we're going. So we'll just move that around with the uh, pano tool on the movements tab. Get that to roughly where we, we want it. That looks quite good there. And obviously we've got these, you can see where they blend. So if you go, if, if we go into um, the fusion, so just to see how it blends, you can just quickly go into the fusion tab and it will, it would just blend the two images. And you can see there's a slight fringing on, on where, or a gradient, if you like, between the two, two images or the two lenses. But for this, ISO cutting is generally better. And then we'll go into the color tab and we'll see if we can just adjust the color slightly so that the two lenses blend together better. So it's, it is less noticeable now. So it has blended that quite nicely. I'm just gonna save that. So you have to press save. So when you load back up auto pano video, it will update on the timeline in auto pano video. So this is what we've got. This is the stitch, so we'll just play it forward a little bit. You can see it's done a pretty decent stitch. The gradient between the two lenses isn't that noticeable, and once you're looking at that in the 360 environment on playback, you probably won't notice it. But that's pretty good. You can probably do some stabilization on this. I'm not gonna do this for this tutorial. So once we were quite happy with the result, I'm just gonna do a quick test. So we're gonna render it out as an H.264. So once you've gone away and done something more interesting than watch a progress bar, you can come back and we wanna try this render in a piece of software just to see what it will look like in the 360 environment from looking around with the mouse cursor for example if you're on YouTube obviously on your phone you can just move the phone around and it will move around the image what you need to do is download a piece of software called insta360 video load in the file that you have just rendered out and you can preview what it will look like in the 360 environment and I can recommend auto pano over action director because it produces a much better quality stitch and final output. It takes a lot more getting used to the controls, um, but essentially it's gonna give you a better output. So I definitely recommend using auto pano video for stitching. Um, but thanks for watching, and if you want the template, just send us an email at info at elevatecam.com.